Abraham Lincoln talked about faith, family, and freedom. That was always the foundation of the Republican Party. Ronald Reagan talked about faith, family, and freedom. To him, that was always the foundation of the Republican Party. And to me, the Republican Party today is all about faith, family, and freedom. And if I am your governor, you know, you know with those three words how I'm going to govern. Versions of Red Move Meet the Candidate. Today we have Senator Dean Heller, who's running for governor of the great state of Nevada. And we have Chris Swanson, who is the president of our independent Nevadans, one of the three clubs that belong to Red Move. So Chris is an independent Nevadan. They're libertarians, libertarian Republicans. So they lean towards the libertarians today. Chris will be interviewing Senator Heller. Go ahead, take it away. Thank you. Hey, Dean. Hey, Chris. <laughs> so we've never done this, have no, we? No, never. <laughs> never. So what do you think Nevada needs in a governor right now? A leader. I think that's what Nevada needs right now is a leader. We got a governor today that's put Nevada, you know, at the top of every bad list in America. Um, you can go from uh, unemployment rates, graduation rates, crime rates, it doesn't matter, uh, suicide rates, human trafficking rates, go through every list out there, and Nevada's at the top of every bad list. Nevada needs some real leadership, and frankly, I think they need aggressive leadership. And I think that's what they like in leadership today. That's why uh, Trump was so popular. That's why DeSantis is so popular. Um, uh, Frankly, that's why Chrissy Nome's so popular. These are aggressive leaders uh, that are making a difference in their states. So if you were in the governor's mansion at the, the onset of COVID, how would you have handled that differently? Uh, very differently. First of all, I wouldn't have shut down this state. I mean, I think I, I look at this governor and imagine that in his first three and a half years as governor, he has locked children out of their schools for half that time. Half that time. And we got second graders that can't read, third graders that can't write, fourth graders that can't do arithmetic. Um, you can't shut this government down. And I always compare what Nevada did. And by the way, Nevada did exactly what California wanted them to do. So you had a governor that turned to uh, Gavin Newsom and says, what do you want me to do? And that's where we shut down businesses. Uh, we picked uh, winners and losers. We shut down uh, our churches. Um, we left abortion clinics open. Uh, another issue that's uh, very ripe today is, uh, as we have this conversation. But needless to say, don't shut this state down. Don't uh, require mandates, vaccine mandates, mask mandates, and all that. I'm not anti-vaccine. I would encourage people to get the vaccine, but that's a choice that they make for themselves, not some government mandate. Well, you brought up a lot right there. Uh, let's let's back up and go into schools. There's a lot of talk about the school voucher program. Can you tell me about that? Well, first of all, I support it. I support vouchers. I support money following the children. I think a parent uh, needs to be more involved in their child's education. One of the problems we have with education today, frankly, in that governor's race we saw in Virginia, it really got and made school board uh, elected positions more important today uh, by, by the reality of the fact that the Democrats or the left doesn't think that a Parents should be involved in the curriculum of their own children. Uh, needless to say, more parental involvement, more vouchers. I want a parent to be able to decide uh, not only which classroom they think their child ought to be in, but which school they ought to be in, whether that's a private school, whether that's a charter school, um, or, or, or another public school. They should have the right to make those kind of decisions when they do. And if they do, obviously, they'll be more involved in that child's education. OK. Children, parents. Roe v. Wade, here we go. How do you see this uh, affecting the race going on and, and moving forward? Well, first of all, I'm pleased that the Supreme Court made the decision that they did. And I hope that uh, we'll see more of it. Uh, obviously, they make a decision in June. Uh, and I'm asked constantly what impact. I think potentially it will have impact uh, on the general election or, or, or through this election cycle. But I will tell you this. Um, if gasoline's at $7 a gallon, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. The left's going down. Yeah. Now, per your faith, you are pro-life. Correct. How do you think your faith, other than pro being pro-life, how do you think your faith affects the way you, you work in government? Well, my faith defines me. My faith has always defined me, and I've always said that it's, it's, it's faith, family, and freedom which basically says my politics is third. <laughs> my faith is first, my family is second, and then my politics is third. And that has always guided me. And as governor, how will that guide you moving forward with all these strange times we're dealing with, with everyone being divided and, and not loving thy brother and, 
and all of that. Well, your job is to change that. I, I still believe you have to be an aggressive governor. You got to make the necessary changes. Uh, you got to watch and see what they're doing in other states, what Abbott is doing in Texas, DeSantis is doing in Florida. These are very aggressive governors, and I think they're doing a great job. But at the same time, you can have the mindset uh, that. Uh, that there can be peace, there can be goodwill. Um, uh, you can, uh, you know, I, I won't wear my faith on the sli on my sleeve because I never have. Um, but everybody will know uh, that I do have uh, a, a strong core belief in something greater than myself, and I always will. Uh, being on that uh, uh, in 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 that corner and on that soapbox, I do believe that we can make it a a softer, friendlier state. Uh, but uh, we're not going to do it at the expense of our economy and everything else that can go wrong uh, because we've been ignoring it uh, with the current governor and uh, in the past. Okay, we've got a lot of good candidates running for, for the legislature. What are some of the things you'd like to work with them on? Well, first governor? of all, first of all, I want them to be Republican. That would sure make my life a lot easier. So let's get... Uh, uh, I think not only can we take the governor's office, um, I think we can take the legislature also. Not to say that it's going to be easy, it's going to take a lot of work, but I assure you, if gasoline's at $7 a gallon, that's, uh, that's the only thing that's going to be on people's mind. I do believe at the end of the day, it will be about the economy, it will be about inflation, it will be about the things that people are struggling to try to overcome today. So we'll continue to work uh, down that route, try to help Republican candidates. If, I have, if I'm fortunate enough to be the nominee um, as, uh, as the Republican nominee, I will work very closely with our candidates uh, that have been uh, nominated also for their particular uh, uh, seats, and I'll work closely with them, raise the money necessary. Let's get this message out. Uh, let's be a solid, strong um, Republican Party. And I also, I also want to make this commitment that regardless of who does come out of the Republican Party, uh, a party for this uh, governor's office I will be supporting. Okay. Very good. So how do you think your experience at the federal level is going to affect our relationship with the federal government? Well, I think it makes all the difference in the world. When I was in Washington, D.C., I was there for 12 years. I passed over 100 pieces of legislation. Imagine 535 colleagues, three different presidents, trying to convince them that my idea is a good idea, not only for America, but of course, uh, but of course for uh, Nevada uh, itself. Uh, the, probably the piece of legislation that I, that I remember and I, and I like the most is the fact that I was one of the authors of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. It provided the largest tax cut uh, in American history uh, for everybody here in this room uh, and uh, listening on this podcast. Um, and I want to do the same thing for Nevada. I am the only candidate in this race that has an economic plan. I want the largest tax cut in Nevada history. Now I say that, you haven't had a tax cut in your history, so to provide the largest tax cut doesn't seem like it would be that big of a leap, but I want to eliminate. I want to eliminate the, uh, the, the uh, commerce tax. I want to cut the sales tax. Um, <laughs> I want, to, uh, I want to suspend the gasoline tax, as long as gasoline's over $4 a gallon. Um, I want to take all the stimulus money, if there's any left after this governor, and give it back to, uh, to Nevada and taxpayers as a rebate. This is what you deserve. You're struggling. Your government is growing. They love inflation. This is the kind of leadership I believe Nevada needs. Okay, so I'll play devil's advocate. You cut all the taxes. Yes. Commerce tax goes away. I'm not sure where that money goes anyway, but say you cut that. <laughs> you, you cut the, <laughs> yes. the gasoline tax, all these taxes. Yes. Uh, how do we keep our overbloated government at, you know, float? Two ways, two ways. First, you cut, you cut your government. I want to cut the general fund in our state government by 20%. I will cut that by 20%, but I will, I will not cut public safety. That's the one thing that, I, that is off the table. I want to make sure that everybody uh, that is listening to this podcast know public safety is a priority. Um, but second, second, and this is always the argument. Look what's going on in South Dakota right now. You have a governor in South Dakota that didn't do anything Nevada did when it came to the pandemic, shutting down schools, shutting down businesses, shutting down churches, and right now they have the lowest unemployment and the highest economic growth going on in that state. We can do the same thing here in Nevada. The whole purpose for these tax cuts and reducing the size of your government is so that our economy can take off. 
I truly believe the revenue revenue will be even more as we as we uh, diversify our economy and get the kind of growth economic growth that we deserve here in this state. We are treading water. That's all we're doing here in the state of Nevada. In the state of Nevada, we have a sleazy governor. As far as I'm concerned, I don't want to replace him with another sleazy governor. I do want to make sure. I want to make sure that this economy grows and grows strong and that's the answer uh, to the question of what happens and what will occur if you give taxpayers relief here in this state so you have overbloated administrators go into their departments and find the fat and cut the fat is that is that the solution or do you have some <laughs> Some, it's going to have to be a heavy, to the madness. It's a heavy hammer. Everybody knows that. It's a heavy hammer. And it's, and it's heavy lifting also. Do you want a governor that's willing to do the heavy lifting? And that is by bringing every these administrators over. And uh, frankly, on day one, every one of these uh, department heads are going to bring me their resignation letter. That's the first thing they're going to do. They're going to bring me their resignation Where letter. Where will they go after it, they leave it, government jobs? By the way, they won't be signed. They won't be signed. <laughs> and I will interview them and decide whether or not I want to keep them. That's how it works. I want you. I want to come in and interview every department head. By the way, give me your resignation letter. Just don't sign it. We'll have an interview, and I'll decide whether or not you sign it. That's interesting. All right, change the topic. Let's uh, let's talk about election integrity. Yes. Do you think that we're going to have integrity in this election? <laughs> this is the toughest part for all the Republicans uh, uh, in this state. Uh, us running for uh, for governor uh, uh, and uh, across the slate right now is that we still we. We have a rigged system here in the state of Nevada. Our system is rigged. I'm not saying that the last election was stolen, but I am telling you it's rigged. The fact that we can water down uh, voter ID, the fact that we now have uh, ballot harvesting and this, uh, this whole chaos that we have called vote by mail, I call it cheat by mail. I mean, if you live in an apartment today, you're going to receive 10 ballots. If you live in an apartment, you're going to receive 10 ballots. And, uh, and you're going to look for yours. But the last 10 people that, was, was, that went through that apartment is also going to get a ballot also. So you're just going to throw those on the ground. And I've seen it. I've seen hundreds of ballots on the ground uh, because they don't clean up the voter rolls like they should here in the state of Nevada. So needless to say, yes, we have to go through this process. I'm hoping that uh, the state's red enough, uh, that, uh, that the left is down and out enough, uh, that we can overcome this rigged system. But that's what we're going to have to do this cycle is overcome a rigged system. So a miracle happens. You get in. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what do you do to fix it afterwards? First of all, it won't be a miracle. It won't be a miracle. We'll make this happen. First thing I do You is better I'm, be good at harvesting. <laughs> first thing I'm going to do is, one, I'm going to require voter ID. That's what I'm going to do. First thing that I do when I get in office is I'm going to require voter ID, and I'm also going to require, I'm also going to require that uh, you have to be a citizen here in the state of Nevada. I want to eliminate the commerce tax, and I know I'll get pushback from the legislature. That's fine. I'm going to try it anyway, and if, they're, and if they oppose me, I'm going to take it straight to the ballot. Um, where it lost before. It was called the margins tax. If you recall, you were involved in that. It failed 70-30. You say 80-20. Failed 80-20. A Republican governor just changed the name of it, called it the commerce tax, and, and shoved it down our throats with a Republican, with a Republican uh, legislature. Um, that is the biggest fail of the Republican Party, I think, in my lifetime. And this is why Republicans are so frustrated, so frustrated with Republican governors. And, and, and think about it. In the 21st century, the two largest tax increases we've had here uh, in the state of Nevada have come from Republican governors. Democrats say, why should I raise taxes? I'll just wait for the next. I'll just wait for the next Republican governor to come along. I am promising you this, that not only did I author the largest tax increase in Washington, D.C., for every taxpayer here in America and here in the state of Nevada, that when I am governor, I am going to provide and I'm going to author the largest, the largest tax cut uh, for Nevadans that they have seen in their lifetime. Wow. Well, we've got to wrap up here. Is there anything else you want to get out there? to all the voters that are watching live stream right now right, right. and to the people here in this room. Sure, sure. And, and, and you started off with this. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln talked about faith, family, and freedom. That was always the foundation of the Republican Party. Ronald Reagan talked about faith, family, and freedom. 
to him, that was always the foundation of the Republican Party. And to me, the Republican Party today is all about faith, family, and freedom. And if I am your governor, you know, you know with those three words how I'm going to govern. And thank you very much for having me here. All right. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you, Senator Heller. Chris. Thank you for listening to this episode of Red Move Nevada. Please subscribe right here and go and listen to one of these other videos. Also, just remember, we always have a luncheon every month or a dinner. So check at redmovenevada.com for our next event.